Hello fellow gamers, it is I, Shadow, once again bringing you another episode of the full army roster bro breakdown and review where this episode we'll be going over the Skaven, Hero and Lords which I need to point out Skaven are my all time favourite race they're the main army I play on the tabletop with Queek as the general I've won many games with them and all of them have been really good fun so for me to finally be able to do this and to play these guys gets me in in the feels, gets me right in the heart. <laughs> Feels so good. Anyway, <laughs> crack out of the Lords, because these are the longest episodes in the whole damn game. So if we get rid of all that, yep, yeah, fair enough. So this is just a basic Warlord, as you can see, cheaper than the other Warlords. The High Elves, the Dark Elves are a thousand coin, and the this Magic Magic is like 1,100. These guys, basic, is only 700. That's how rubbish they are by comparison. So, they're armoured and shielded. They have a missile resistance of 15. They've got courage, hide, and scurry away. Which is, when their leadership is low, um, their speed goes up by 12%. <laughs> Love it. So... What can they get? Well, they can get a Bone Breaker for 500, which is always good because that adds Siege Attacker, causes fear and frenzy to their profile. So very much worth it. What abilities do they have? Pretty standard. Rally for um, effects alloys within 40 meters. Um, and itself, he can rally himself, which is always good. Last for 10 seconds, but ups the leadership by 16. With Skaven, that's hugely important. Vermis Valor. Again, duration 14 seconds, target itself. Oh, I've got to say the cost 80 for that one, 75 for that one. It's an explosion, like the Lizardman one, where all it does is it pushes the enemy away, and then you get a buff of 24% speed and 8 leadership, and it's just good for getting out of the fight. So, always good there. And for 158, you can get Deadly Onslaught. For items, they can get for 78 the Shield of Distraction, which is really cool, I thought, because. Any enemies within 30 metres of him lose 5 melee attack. That can make a big difference. So, 74, 8, that's not bad. Then you've got the World's Edge armour for 87. Um, annoyingly, it's a one-use ability. Um, yeah, you can only use it once. And it lasts for 67 seconds. So you're only paying a go more than one gold coin per second. But it ups your armour by 60. So if you're in a tight spot that might be worth it. Maybe keep your warlord alive I guess. So that is the warlord cover there. We then have the Grey Shears Plague and Ruin isn't it? Yep so let's just get rid of all his spells and abilities. And we both know they're going to be the same in regards to cost. So a basic Grey Shear with no abilities whatsoever is worth 350. Um, to be fair, he's got nothing special. Missile resistance 15, scurry away, spell cost, nothing really there. But for 800 coins, you could put him on the Screaming Bell. That gives him a magic resistance of 25%, makes him a siege attacker, can cause fear. He has a war of unholy sound. So it's a constant ability around him. Um, Just reading what it does there. Effect range is 55 meters. Yeah, and a, Gives all allies four points of leadership and five points of melee attack. So that's pretty cool. Also, Scorch. So it gives him a breath attack, which um, has a, can target up to 150 meters and causes magical and fire damage. Long fin expand and tear shaped attack. Strong versus multiple units. I seriously need to use the Screaming Bear in a battle. And the Unholy Clamor, which is a. Augmenter spell affects allies and himself map wide lasts for 14 seconds, but during that 14 seconds he get they all get plus 16 leadership and 18% vigor. That's that's a big deal. That's the whole map. That's a lot. So his um uh, abilities is Plague Rass, which is map wide and it affects the enemy and apparently it lowers their speed by 12% and their vigor by 9%. I yeah. And that's 80 gold. So, mm, I mean, 80 gold, but it affects everyone. And it's constant. So, they will actually all tire quicker. And they will all be slower. So, you can outmaneuver them. And, of course, for 160, the Arcane Conduct. 
spells. Now, I believe this is just the spells of the, um... Nope, I'm wrong. That. Just check it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So, that's why it's slightly different. So they do get most of the spells. But instead of getting... Is it Vermintide they don't have? Is that one? That's it. Um, The Graciers cannot use Pestilence Birth. That's the one that's missing there, okay? So, if we go over it, they can have the Dreaded 13th spell for 282. That's instead of the being able to summon Plague Mons. That's it, now I remember. So, for 202... Um, can get the Dreaded 13 spell. If you don't know what these spells do, go to my magic video, the one previous to this, and it, I go into great detail about it all. So, Pestilent Breath, 77, not Birth, Breath. Make sure there's a difference there. Um, Bless with Filth, 78. You've got Wither for 162. Vermintide for 172. So, they can spawn normal clan rats, just not the Plague ones. And Plague for 242. Items they can have. Potent of Verminous Doom. Oh, okay, that's really cool. It affects all enemies on the map, and it permanently... Hang on, does it? Sorry, no, my mistake. I thought it said, when I said in melee, I thought it said on map. Okay, so any enemy units within 40 meters have minus 4 to their leadership. That's a nice item. For 78, I'd probably get that. Purely because that minus 4 can make a big difference to a line breaking. And for 78, they can get Warp Storm Scroll. Um, it lasts 33 seconds. It's direct damage. It can attack a ground or enemy target directly within 100 meters. Uh, ah, okay, then target if flying unit. So, yeah, causes damage to combatants. Strong versus mobile combatants. Uh, weak versus some minus 48% speed. See, mm, when I use this. Yeah, I think what it does is it does damage to units and it makes flyers slow down. I think it's the whole point of that. Um, might be worth trying out. Be interested to see what happens. But I'd much rather have that. If it was a choice between the two because they're both worth 78, I'll definitely go with the Verminous Doom because of the minus leadership. But that's just my opinion. Um, so if we go to the Plague Shear of Ruin, I expect everything is the same. Um, yes it is, so what we do is we just go over its ability, which is worth 53, and it's the Musk of Fear, affects enemies in range, map wide, um, and it's constant, it lowers their leadership by 4, and then may they attack by 13. What was the one they had? His one was, um, the Plague one, wasn't it? Slows down the Vigor and that, I think I'd rather have that. To be honest, the Musk of Fear. Because can you imagine that? That lowers map wide leadership by four. You then have the Potence of Doom minus another four. And I believe if you have that, let's get rid of the spell so we can. Um, I believe that lowered leadership as well, didn't it? Where is it? Musk of Fear, yeah. Wolf on Highly Sun, there you go. It buffs your own leadership, yeah. And causes fear. So, yeah. You know what? I think I'm going to have to do a battle replay. Just try and the grey shield and the... Try and use the units that no one's really using. Be good to do that. Anyway, now I've distracted myself. So, yes, for 76 coin, you can get the Mask of Fear. And, of course, for 160, you can get the Arcane Conduct. What spells has he got with a Dreaded 13 spell, of course, for 282? But then he's got Warp Lightning for 152. The Howling Warp Gale is 80. The Dread Frenzy is 162, the Scorch is 157, and Crack's Core is 136. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good, and items are identical. So now we're going into our special characters. So this means a lot to me because Queek is the guy who leads my tabletop army to victory, and to see him here live is amazing. So we've got Armoured, Armour Pearson, Anti-Infantry, and Duelist, obviously. Um, he's got Missile Resistance 15 and all the other benefits as well. Um, Verus Valor, he can have for 75. Um, Stand Your Ground for 162. And Trophy Heads for 164, which targets a Lord or Hero. And for 140, um, 140, sorry, 47 seconds, 
For an enemy Lord of Heroes that's within 150 meters, their melee defense goes down by 45, and their melee attack by 26. So if you get a good surround on someone, let's say a dragon or something like that with a lord on it, and then he drops that trophy heads on them, their defense goes down by 45 points. That's mad. Um, so I'm just looking. Uh, Queek's melee defense, as an example, let's say Queek was against Queek and Worm had trophy hedge. They could completely remove their melee defense because Queek has a melee defense of 42. So, and this is a high lord here is where we're talking here, Queek. So, yeah, that's quite devastating. Items he can have, he can have the Warp Shard armor, which is his own special armor for 244. Um, any enemy within 40 meters of him lose 18 armor. <laughs> Wow. So, that's pretty good. And then, of course, his good old favourite weapon, Dwarf Gouger, which is an augment spell he can target himself for 46 seconds, and it just adds 40% to his armor person. So, combined, lower the armor by 18, and then remove 40% more armor when you attack is a big deal. So, I absolutely love this guy. I absolutely love him. But we must move on. We must not show favouritism here. So, here we go, finger, good. Lord Scrow, on his own, is 900. He's a spellcaster, he's a plague sensor. Um, he's a decent melee combatant, and he's got frenzy. So, what's that? He's got that. Cont contaminated. Um, for 10 seconds, is that an ability then? or No, it isn't. Okay, then. Um, 10 seconds, minus 10 leadership for the person he's attacking. And magical attacks. Yeah, so I guess when he attacks someone, their leadership goes down by 10. Wow. Okay, so he could break lines on his own. He's got a missile resistance of 15. He's got causes fear. He's got scurry away. And, of course, he's got frenzy. So what abilities does he have? Well, he can get a plague grass for 80 um, coins. That's, I believe, the same one. Yeah, those the speed and vigor for everyone against him. Or pestilence. Which is a constant, affects enemies within 40 meters. For 81 coin, you can lower their melee attack by 5. And of course, good old stand your ground for 162. Spells. I believe in this one has just got all the plague ones, like the plague priests do. So, 77 for Pestilent Breath, 78 for Bless the Filth, Wither for 162, Vermintide for 172, Plague for 242, and Pestilent Birth for 248. His items he can pick are the Rod of Corruption. Which is a direct damage and affects enemies in range of 30 meters and it just causes damage to them, to be honest, for 239. Now, I believe I have used that before and it wasn't that great. The area, it is literally just the circle around him, a little bubble around him does damage to them. For 239, to use an ability that takes 135 seconds to recharge, that's two minutes per use. And in a game that can last four to five minutes... Eh, not grey, I don't I wouldn't say I think that's quite costly for what it does. Um and the Liber Barbonicus is a direct damage again, um lasts for twenty seconds. Any enemy within a hundred meters costs two hundred and thirty nine and again just causes damage to combatants strong versus a single combatant. So that's good against picking out characters. Um yeah, um, so one's good against a group, but he has to be in the, the problem is he has to be in the middle of it. And as they say, he's a decent melee combatant, so not great. And again, uh, 239 for an ability I can use every two minutes. I don't know. I don't know if those items are good enough, to be honest. Which of course then weakens his whole position of is it worth taking him as a lord? This is not so in favoritism to Quake. So let's get out our heroes. So. First one, another classic for my army, was um, the Warlock Engineer. So, Warlock Engineer, basic, is 350 points. As you can imagine, he's pretty naff. Um, he's the same cost as 120 Clan Rats of Spears. There you go. That's, um, yeah. So, he's spellcasted the Varma Pearson, and he's got all the usual things. Nothing special there. Um, this is something that I don't think a lot of people realise. He has an ability for 83 coins. Extra powder affects all allies within 40 minute, um, meters. It ups their explosion damage by 10% and their armor piercing explosion by 10%. That's a big deal. 
You've got, like, I assume that affects artillery, so catapults, warp lightning cannons. Can you imagine warp lightning cannons with a bigger explosion than the explosion's got better armor piercing? And you could just have this guy, um, there you go, you could just have 433 points, and he could sit in between, I mean, the range isn't great, I don't think, it's, um, 40 meters, but have two sets of lightning cannons on either side of him, zapping away. They're gonna do so much damage. Um, that 10% can make a real difference. He's also got Musk of Fear, as we know, it's, um, activate if casting, and it those leads to a melee attack of everyone, map the enemy, by leadership 4, melee attack 13 for 80 gold. And for 161, you can have the Doom Rocket. This was a fin of beauty on the tabletop, and I don't think I've seen it used, so I'm gonna have to make an army using the stuff that people aren't really using. For 161, you can have a magic missile, which is a one-use fin. It targets an enemy within 200 meters. It splits into multiple projectiles mid-air, causes magical and fire damage, a vector of a long-range, strong versus single combatants. I like it. We're going to have to use that for 161. We'll give that a try. And of course, I should really shout out. I'll do it in the other series as well. If there's units you like, Shadow, why don't you give that a try? Let's try in this combination based on what you've seen in this series. Comment below. It would be fantastic for you guys to go. Shadow, this unit looks amazing. Why don't you try this combo? Because it might be something I've not seen before. It would be fantastic if you guys do that. Because I will go give it a go and see how it does online. Anyway, we have the Assassin. If we get rid of all its abilities, basic 600 cost. It's got stalk, duelist, and dodge. He's got a physical resistance of 30%, which is really impressive. And um, of course, good old scurry away. Abilities it can be slippery, so for 80 gold, you can activate that whenever you really need it. And for 27 seconds, his melee defense goes up by 27 points, and his speed goes up by 24%. I'm sure I'm not breathing properly. I'm getting so into the Skaven thing. <laughs> you can give for zero cost? I'm, I am reading that, right? That's... Why would you not do that? Why would you not always have that text? There's three of them. You can use them every 90 seconds. Only targets himself, but for every 30 sec for 36 seconds, you become hidden. You become effective at flanking, you're stalk, and you can only be spotted if you're very, very close. So I believe what you do is you use that when someone's found you. They can see you, you do that, boom, you disappear. Like, they can see you from a distance. Or you're just about, and leave one set of woods to jump into another. Um, and you know it's going to take you, say, 20 seconds to get there, but you don't want to be seen. Concealment bomb, run across, no one will ever know you were there. And trophy heads, the same as Queek, you know, you target a lord or hero for 164 for those 47 seconds, then melee, defense, and attack go down. Very good for an assassin. Abilities, arrival, hide, talisman. So for 77, you can only use this once. 77 to gold. But it affects enemies in within 40 meters. Um... Which is pretty good. Um, it lowers their melee attack by 44 points. That's pretty good. Um, you know, even if you had him as a support unit in the middle of a massive combat and you do use that, that could turn the tide. And Skaven Brew um, affects yourself and allies within 100 meters. Or you can target an ally within 100 meters, sorry. That's for 53 seconds. It's a one use for 158 gold, only one use. But it ups their melee attack by 44, their weapon damage by 25%, but it lowers their armor by 30, but it makes them immune to psychology. Um, so they literally just throw themselves in, in there and hope for the best. So that is the assassin, and finally we've got the good old classic Plague Priest. Who, yes, I have a Plague Priest in my army as well. Maybe at some point I'll have to do a video just about what my army list is for 8th edition, um, Warhammer Fantasy before it all got blown up. It's a good army. It won me a lot of games. Anyway, moving on. 600 points for the Plague Priest. He's a Spellcaster, Plague Sensor, Armor Piercing, and Frenzy. So as we know, if he does damage, it um, lowers their leadership by 10 for 10 seconds. But of course, if he keeps hit, hitting them, I assume it just keeps going. Um, magical Attacks, and of course, Armor Piercing. He's got Frenzy. Uh, yeah, so that's all normal. He obviously can go on a Plague Furnace. So what does the Plague Furnace give him? The Pestilent Breath ability if he's just on the plague furnace so you don't have to that'll be a built-in ability very nice he also has a billion death 
which is a direct damage. Um, it's constant around him. Oh, okay then. So, anyone within 40 meters of this fin would take damage constantly while it's in battle. That's huge. And of course, Pestilent Breath as well. Nice bit of damage. See, we're learning a lot here from all this. Um, his ability is Plague Rash, which of course is the one that lowers the speed and vigor by um, everyone on the map. Now, I wonder if these stack. Now, if you had Scro and a couple of Plague Priests, would they stack or would it just be the one? Surely, if you paid the coins, the 80 coins for it. And also, I don't remember if I said Plague Furnace 700. Let's not forget that. So let's look at his spells. And these should be the default spells. Pestilent Breath 77. The Blessed of Filth 78. The River for 162. The Vermintide for 172. The Plague for 242. And the Pestilent Birth for 248. Which items can he take? Well, he can have Pipes of Piebold. It's constant ability. And anyone within 55 meters of him... Um, lose 4% charge speed and 8% charge bonus for 82. Um, this becomes disabled when he's engaged in combat. So you, I think this guy is meant to stay just behind your main line. If he can lower and he does damage, but he don't have to be um, in damage, that could be helpful. 82 coin? I guess so. I mean, 55 meters is quite a distance. And of course, you've got Skull and Stone, which... When used, can be used every 45 seconds for 82 gold. Damage resistance goes up by 22 and leadership goes up by 8. Very important that. And so there you have it. That is the Skaven Lords and Heroes. In the next episode we'll get to the infantry. Now because the Skaven don't have cavalry. And a lot of infantry. I mean they've got more melee infantry than some of the new races have. Like the High Elves. Um, melee and rain Missile Infantry combined. They've got more of. It's insane. I believe, yeah, so it's a bit insane. So the Skaven, where well, everyone's going to have infantry and then cavalry, Skaven are going to have melee infantry, then missile infantry, just so you understand. Then we'll do monsters and war machines, which is going to be good fun. So stay tuned for that. If you're enjoying what you've seen so far, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comment below. Also, as I said, I'm going to remember to sound this in other videos. Um, to shout out if there's units you like the look of and you want me to try them out in a battle, say so. If you can think of a good theme, try it. I'll be going with Clan Moors. I'll be trying a Plague Army. I'll be trying um, well, a Pestilent Clan. I will be trying a... Um, oh, well, it's Ski ones. So it's all going to be technology. So it would be mostly um, like a Warlord and a lot of Warlock Engineers. And, you know, the big stuff is going to be quite interesting to go. Anyway, oh, and of course, Clan Moda, because that'd be easy. It's just all big monsters, isn't it? Not much engineering, but all the big monsters. That'd be that'd be fun. Anyway, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you all for joining me. I hope to see you in the next one. Till then, take care.